the case of the Bridges Dialogue, our aim is really to bring again the, the voice from China to interact with voices from around the world and do that in Geneva, given the very special uh, characteristic of Geneva as a global platform, the transformation that is going on in China and how it affects the, the world at a time where we are uh, in difficult, uh, facing difficult challenges, where China is really the driver of growth, the driver of policy change, uh, any movement towards not only out of this crisis, but towards a low carbon uh, economy in the world will have to go through uh, the involvement of China. But in any case, surely the, the, the bigger role that um, China now plays deserves recognition in uh, global governance and perhaps it also demands greater responsibilities. Is China willing to do more in leadership? Since China became the uh, member of G20 summit, uh, you have seen that uh, China is becoming more and more active on the world uh, uh, stage uh, after the Cold War. This uh, bipolar uh, world disappeared. So the U.S. became the sole superpower in the world. And that uh, really disrupted the balance of the world. We would rather see the world that will become more balanced with multipolar uh, players because China as a developing country with 1.3 billion people we have many big problems so it's a it's a it's a matter of priority first we have to do our own work well growth has been achieved in China through a massive increase in bank lending there is a risk that maintaining stimulus for much longer will create asset bubbles, bad loans, and all other kinds of very messy problems. Um, China's growth so far this year has been driven overwhelmingly by fixed asset investments. China's policy stance is accommodative, and that's essentially what I would suggest. I think that the global recovery looks fragile, both within China and also without China. And the main reasons are twofold. One is fragility in the recovery of the financial sector. And the second reason, and this will differ for China as it will for other countries, is the extent to which final demand, as generated by consumers, is enough to stimulate a sustained recovery. So I think there's a, there's a concern there that this wave of money uh, is going to uh, end up uh, causing problems. And then over the longer term, uh, surely it's a problem that the Chinese banking system is viability is essentially being sacrificed as a, as a recession fighting measure. Now China is not the only country which has done this in this crisis. So look at Germany. Uh, Chinese demand is underpinning African growth. Increasingly, as you see the, the entrenching of the, of the supply chain, the trading links in the commodities from Africa, sub-Saharan Africa particularly, into China, so you'll see a component of Chinese growth will become dependent on Africa's ability to supply. I cannot emphasize more the importance of uh, legislative certainty and the policy coherence, which is very important uh, to business and also for the investment. Without such a coherent international legislation or policy in place, we cannot provide a level playing field to enable business to compete fairly on a global scale. Probably the really important one is that carbon markets will remain really weak for the first trading period up to 2020. Uh, they'll be thin, uh, prices will be fragile, uh, volatile, 
somebody will make a lot of money out of the volatility, but it won't be good for mitigation. And in the new world of low carbon economy, there will be lo winners and losers, and the politician will tell us that there will be only winners are just not being very, very honest with us. But those who will start early, those who will start early, and the EU has started early, are gonna be winners. And this is where China's opportunity comes in, because they have the opportunity to leapfrog a whole series of technologies that we have been stuck in.另外在中国开展高校发电建筑节能也需要开发关键的和一些共性的技术扩大能效标识的范围开展节能管理试点等等也需要借鉴发达国家成熟的经验和有益的做法那么中国现在在考虑的是战略性新兴产业的发展所